Hello peeps, Struggadale, welcome back to the ninth episode of my Let's Play series where not even I know where we are going to end up. We have a lot of stuff to do because I want to reshape our ship and I'm not pleased with the walling off of some sections so we finally should put things where they really should be. So I am giving dismantling and building orders and stuff like that like crazy this episode because it is time. You know, so we are pretty much where we left off last episode after freeing Caesar out of his hypersleep chamber in the upper ship. I didn't show the lower one because that was uninfested and boring. Our resources are all for a little stop here for salvage operations, so I figured we have two derelicts here. So how about we rid one of all its energy scrap because of turning it into energium. And then was thinking when we are building our ship now, we probably also need all the other scrap pipes to, you know, continue building. Our research of the X1 hyperdrive should finish today. And then while thinking about it, I kind of had a little sense crisis, meaning where should we go? What should we do? And then I was checking the map. So I was thinking what would make good content or interesting content. So we would have this alien infested system over here and then followed up by the pirate system over there. And Eden probably would be in that region of the map. So then another thought hit me like when we have the hyperdrives and then we are researching the solar panels. So all our energy stuff would also be sorted out and then maybe get the composter and the autopsy table as well. So all the water thing is going to go as well. So resource wise there is no real challenge left. And this kind of bugs me. So I am thinking like maybe I shouldn't have started on medium difficulty. Maybe I should have started on harsh. Okay, so I decided to end this season of the Let's Play pretty soonish and then rather start a new one. I might really miss our crew though. Maybe there is a solution for that. But the thing is, we didn't really pay attention to those anyway, kind of, did we? You know, Baxter's our frontman, Corey is our industrious, Jonathan is our leader, researcher guy, Cameron is our medic. Uh, Caesar I really like because he's, you know, basically check of all trades, but really weak and antisocial. So he always takes the, you know, the shift when the others sleep. And Emery, I mean, Emery is a cool guy, right? Bloodlust, the uh, fighter thingy <laughs> that likes to do research and other stuff as well. And even also likes construction. I really might miss him. But then I was also wondering, like, should I maybe focus more on the characters? Uh, imagine little stories? Let me know in the comments. So while we are watching the building progress and the salvaging operations from different angles, I'd like to talk about my plans about replacing my old computer. For those which don't know it yet, it broke down at the 5th of May this year and I figured it is not a good time to get a new one yet. So right now I am doing my videos on a computer that has been given to me by a friend. Thank you, Pavel. But I also would like to bring my Modern City Skyline series back on the channel. And that for we need something really beefy. Because City Skylines alone requires about 16 gigabytes of RAM. And with the mods and assets, even more. Well, so why not just buy a new PC and be done with it? If you want to game, you should get a PC, right? The thing is, this statement is too simple for my taste. Basically, it is a statement that came up because people got tired of going through all the pros and cons and then simplified it into a single sentence. One of the driving factors for the computers we have today was gaming with its high demands for performance. How exactly do you define performance? Does this only measure the speed of your computer? Does this measure the graphical performance in 4K at how many frames per second? Or are there other factors as well? Like how much power does such a computer draw from the outlet to do all these things? I've fried at least double the GPUs that I own computers. So they died through the heat that came with their power consumption. And this is the reason why I want to get one of the new Macs with the new M1 X M2 processor things. Not only are they going to outperform everything the competition has to offer, but they do this with about a third of the power consumption. And as far as I know, they deliver these performances 
even though the software has not been optimized for those ARM chips. So they are so efficient that they outperform the competition even though they have to emulate pretty much everything. So for me, this is something to really geek out about. The thing is, I have switched to Apple a few years back when Microsoft and Intel wanted to implement TCPA, which is a hardware-based DRM system, so you could not do piratey things with your computer. And Apple back then was like, nope, our customers are not guilty by default. And that for me was the selling point. But there are not so many games on the Mac. That's kind of true, but there are engines like Unity, for example, which are cross-platform. And if there are some big titles which are really promising, there are companies like Aspire, which are going to port them over to the Mac just a few months later. So actually, it never felt like a really big deal to me. I mean, most of the time you are only playing one or two games anyway. So just keep looking and there are so many great titles out there. And then there is this notion of the CO2 footprint thing. If I can lower my electrical bills and at the same time do something for climate change by using a computer that has not all but most games available, I'm for it. But enough of that for now. I think I made my point clear. I'd love to hear your opinion on that. But I think it is time that we get back into our game. We don't really need that much hull scrap, so i rather get on my way out of our starting solar system cluster. But we'll fetch some things on the way out. Okay, besides the mining, I have to do lots of micromanagement to make them do some of the jobs I really need faster. Um, because the automatic priorization does not always work in your favor. So, um, for example, you saw me giving Caesar in his shift orders to empty the storage unit and we want this storage unit moved ASAP because I want a second shuttle hanger in there. And then again, we wanted to get the hull uh, done quickly. So I had to assign people to do that. Now everything in the front middle of the ship, like the research labs and the navigation console, were pretty much in the way, because there I want to have a central hub thing for composters and ideal air conditions for growing food. And that has to be in the middle of the ship because the grow areas will be left and right of it. And then also such restructurations often mean we need a new concept or new positions for our power nodes. And since I also want to move the navigation console, then a military alliance ship uh, started to come in. And since we have about seven, I think, human meat aboard, which is a contraband thing, I didn't want to run into an inspection. So I forced my crew to move the navigation console as quickly as possible to get out of this uh, sector as fast as possible. Then I wanted to grab some of the ice that we left in the central system of the system cluster. The cool thing is not only do we get our ice, we also have the opportunity to trade, but sadly with the ship we already traded and those civilians didn't have any credits left, so we couldn't sell our fabrics. I just bought a few steel plates and that's about it. After micromanaging a little bit and checking that everything's okay, I noticed that our ship's pretty heavy, so I was considering and then also doing a third hyperdrive. Also, Jonathan, our miner, was not as motivated as I wanted, so I had to send out Cameron manually to grab the rest of the ice. On our way to the hyperlane, we got interrupted by pirates and had to have a quick look at them. I considered a fight, but um, since they got turrets and we didn't, I just didn't want to risk it. So yeah, we just pretty much jumped straight out again and then moved onward on the hyperlane. Off the hyperlane, we ended up in a sector with a slaver skilled ship, which we traded our fabrics for tech blocks and still made a little bit of money. Then I had to micromanage to move the CO2 producer and add another O2 producer and finally walling off this entire section, which is later becoming our composter autopsy table and atmosphere area. 
If you have watched my logistics tutorial, you know what we are doing here. We are basically separating the botany autopsy table composter area from the industry storage. So there are only a few goods which have to be brought back and forth, like from the industry area, a little bit of water eventually. But all the corpses which come through the airlock will be moved to the kind of botany storage circle and then from there it's only carbon and raw chemicals which get moved back into the storage for the industry area. This way we reduce the amount of logistic tasks drastically and those which are still there will only have to walk very short distances just from the storage to the composter or from the autopsy table to the storage stuff like that. Also the bigger room with just the one research lab in it that is going to be our medical sections in the future but I want this to be in the middle of the ship because it's the middle of the ship where pirates and stuff are always firing at. We want to have a sealed off area that can basically get hurt but is not that important for the ship's survival. And then as our crew creeps growing it is time that we put in more grow beds preferably at the final position. The funny thing is through all this planning and micromanagement I totally was immersed into the game and didn't notice that we're actually just sitting there and wasting time so it is time to move on because you know we are always on the hunt for more resources. I had a little look around that the entire alien presence system is made of red dwarf so we won't have any heat issues here that's cool. I thought we would have hit the mother load because of the two derelict chips and the energium to be harvested, but... The cool thing is, they just... Ooh, hello! You die. <laughs> Who got hit? I don't even know. That's cool. Oh, hypersleep chamber. Awesome. Incoming solar flare, so that's not much time left then. Okay, one open this. You... Go in there. Who? Laurie. Laurie. Let's let's see. He's a confident guy. We yeah, are weapons two and very low perception. Okay, so sixty percent. Uh. But he's brave, and you know. Huh. I don't know if I'm too keen on him, to be honest. I mean, he can do construction and navigation. Can do research. A bit of botany, a bit of mining. Whatever. Welcome to the team, Lori. Solar flares incoming. So, we eventually... Should get the heck out of here. If there's a hauler, there's probably also a lair.
we can see through all those rooms, so let's get going. If there is a lair, then it's it's around here-ish. There isn't. Awesome. Let's undraft those guys. And let's see what we get. We get lots of useful stuff. We want to move that instantly. As it turned out, my crew saw that way more relaxed than I did. So they had a little chilling every once in a while and were moving slowly. But then again, their day was over, so they were tired and wanted to go to bed. So we got out before the solar flare hit us, so that's good. Now we are in another system with another derelict ship, which we are going to explore next time. If you are still watching, you are part of the 20 and hour delete, a secret society of my most dedicated viewers. So I'm giving out the secret codes so that you can use them in the comments to show me and the others that you care about my videos. Thanks for watching, commenting, liking and subscribing. I hope you enjoyed this episode and we are going to see each other next time. Bye guys.